I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Flying a quadcopter? Awesome. Landing and changing your battery? Not awesome. So today, I'm going to give you a list of 10 things you can do to get more flight time out of your quadcopter. Stay tuned. Tip number one for longer flight time, lose weight. No, not you, your quadcopter. The lighter a quadcopter is, the less energy it needs to keep itself in the air or to change direction, and the longer it will fly. And this is a tough one because, like, most of us didn't set out to build a heavy quadcopter. But unless you really focus on lightening your quadcopter, and you really have to think about this from the moment you start planning the build, unless you really focus on that, you're going to end up with a quadcopter that's heavier than it needs to be. My rule of thumb is that for a freestyle quad, around 650 grams is about as heavy as I want it to be, and somewhere around 550 grams, down to maybe 500 grams. Well, at that point, especially because a freestyle quad is usually carrying a GoPro, about down around 500, 550 grams, it is really challenging, and you start making some real compromises with durability. Racing quads, I commonly see them down even lighter than maybe 500 grams, and that's with the battery. Um, but I don't have as much of a sort of a peg on racing quads because I'm not a, like a full-time racer. The gist of it is that you need to look at your quadcopter and think about what could I take off this thing to make it lighter. So all those fancy 3D printed parts, that stuff adds up. And that's a key thing when you're thinking about losing weight. It adds up. Because you can make a few decisions that are going to just knock 20 grams off your quadcopter. Maybe knock 30 grams off your quadcopter if, you, if you've made it heavier than it really needs to be. But there's very few things you can do that will knock a lot of weight off. And then you really got to go for every little gram here or there. So swapping out, uh, like let's say you were to swap your steel screws for titanium screws. I'm not necessarily recommending you do that, but if you did do that, you might save, you know, four grams. Well, that's not that much, but four grams here and three grams there and five grams here and suddenly you save 20 grams and that is a lot. But no matter how much you do to shave weight off of an existing build, the reality is there's only going to be so much you can do. So, for example, this is the Catalyst Machine Works Smooth Operator. It's a freestyle build that I made. And, like, the frame itself is so much of the weight. And there's just, what are you going to do? Uh, take off this brace. Okay, but now I've really compromised strength. So, planning a lightweight build getting a lighter weight frame using lighter weight motors. These are some steps you can take to save weight right there at the beginning. And the difference between say a 140 gram frame and say a 95 gram frame, that's a lot of weight to have saved right at the start. Maybe that lighter frame is less durable. These are sort of trade-offs we have to make, but plan with lightweight components, especially the frame and the motor to begin with, and then find ways to remove stuff or not add unnecessary stuff. And remember that every little bit adds up a few grams here and there over the course of a whole build do add up to a substantial amount. Tip number two, lower your up tilt angle. So if you're like Maddie stunts and you fly with 60 degrees up tilt angle, your quadcopter is going to go super fast but your motors are gonna to have to spin super hard in order to keep it in the air. And you're gonna get much, much shorter flight times. Uh, when I was in Atlanta a little while back, I, we did a trading quads episode of Rotor Riot. And as part of that, I got to fly one of Schizo's quads. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, he flies with a super low up tilt, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 degrees. I don't know what it actually is, but it's much, much lower than mine, which is around 30 or 35 degrees. And he got so much longer flight time than me because I was always at a lower throttle position. Well, also because his motors are different than, you know, there's a lot of other differences, but the biggest difference I felt was the difference in up tilt angle. So lowering your up tilt angle will give you longer flight times, but it'll also change the way you fly. If you're looking to do kind of juicy style flight, people like Wild Willie or Johnny or Schizo, then that low up tilt angle is going to work for you. But if you want to fly like Maddie or me, 
then you kind of need that higher up tilt angle and you may not be willing to make that choice. That being said, if you feel like exploring lower up tilt, you will get much longer flight times. You'll also just be flying slower at the, at the same time. Tip number three for getting longer flight times is use lower pitch props. So you know how a prop is described as like five by 4.5 and the first number is the diameter and the second number is the pitch. A prop that has lower pitch will make less thrust, but generally also give you longer flight times, all else being equal. It's a little tricky because a, a prop with less thrust may need to be run at a higher throttle position in order to sort of keep the quad in the air and keep it flying. But in general, more aggressive props like 50-50 props or 5 by 4.8 props, in general, they suck the battery dry sooner while giving you a much more exhilarating, speedy, punchy experience. And if you're going for longer flight times, just take your props down just a small notch in terms of, of pitch, and I think you'll get, you'd probably get longer flight times. If you really care, you can look at some bench testing and try and find props that are more efficient. A more efficient prop will make the same amount of thrust while drawing less amps, but that's maybe a level of research that people might not be willing to get into. And I'm not actually sure how much those bench test results directly apply to your real world experience. Going to a prop with less pitch will probably give you longer flight times. You know what they say, like, if you want better gas mileage, just be easy on the accelerator. Don't be peeling out from every uh, stoplight, you know. Well, you could do the same thing with your quadcopter. And I think of this sometimes because people sometimes say, oh, I get eight minute flight times. And I'm like, you probably aren't going very fast. You're just tooling around. Yeah, you can get a shockingly long flight time if you just go easy on the throttle, but you're not having as much fun. That being said, if you, instead of just going full send it for your whole flight, this is more for freestyle and fun flyers than racers who just have no choice but to go full send it. Instead of going full send it for your whole flight, if you mix in those punchy moves with some smooth acro flying, then you'll get longer flight times. There's a thing you can do in beta flight that actually enforces this on you. It's called a throttle limit. And let me show you how to set that up. So here in the beta flight CLI tab, I'm gonna type get throttle underscore limit and the two parameters we're interested in are the throttle limit type and the throttle limit percent. The throttle limit type can be set to either scale or clip. Scale will scale your throttle down to a lower value. So basically you have the full stick movement but you will only get 80% of your throttle for example. Clip just chops the throttle off above a certain value. So your stick movement remains the same you know, your hover point doesn't move, but above a certain point, it just doesn't give you any more throttle. So what you can do is you can type set throttle limit type equals, I like scale because I like to have the full throttle range and I'll just find the hover point wherever it might be. And then set throttle limit percent. And you can just knock that down to 85% or something. And it's interesting because at the very top end of the throttle is actually where your motors are, well, that's where they consume a lot of current. I'm not sure if they're actually more or less efficient at that percent, but they consume a lot of current. So by just knocking off maybe the top 10 or 15% of your throttle range, you actually can substantially increase your flight time. And if you're a little bit careful with your, you know, you could still get pretty good flying out of it. Tip number five for getting longer flight times is use smaller motors. The sort of standard size for motors today is 2306 or 2207, but you can use a smaller motor like a 2206 and all else being equal, the smaller stator volume is going to pull less amps. There are some other motor designs that will result in less amp draw. For example, motors with weaker magnets like N48 magnets are going to tend to pull less amps than motors with more powerful magnets like N52 magnets. And motor KV comes in. A lower KV motor, all else being equal, will pull fewer amps than a higher KV motor. But all of these things that reduce amp draw also will tend to reduce the power. So you may end up, there, there's always trade-offs here. All that being said, those things will increase your flight time. The other reason a smaller motor will increase your flight time is that the motors are simply lighter. The difference between a 30 gram and a 33 gram motor, that may not sound like much, but three grams times four motors is 12 grams. And that, when combined with other things, can really add up to a pretty substantial difference in weight. Remember, weight reduction and flight time are sort of incremental. 
you get 10 grams here. Uh, 10 grams doesn't make a difference, but 10 grams here, 10 grams there, 5 grams here, and suddenly you've made a big difference. Tip number six for longer flight times, use larger diameter props. It's actually a fact. There's a physics, aerodynamics. I don't actually know the whole reason why, but larger props are more efficient in terms of their ability to make thrust. And that's why great big helicopters with giant rotors get more efficiency than little mini quads, even if they make the same amount of sort of thrust to weight. You do need to go to lower KV. If you take a 2500 KV motor and you put 6 inch props on it instead of 5 inch props, you'll probably get less flight time because that larger prop is making more thrust and spinning faster and working harder. So what you need to do is go to larger props but then take the KV of the motor down so that you end up with approximately the same amount of thrust and actually being able to do that where well, you can look at motor thrust charts or just sort of talk to people who've built similar quads and get an idea of what KVs they tend to use and what kind of flight times they tend to use. So for example with six inch props you might be looking at 2100 to 2300 KV as a baseline whereas for five inch props maybe 24 to 2600 KV is a general baseline. So larger props with lower KV will give longer flight times. The trade-off is that you're going to get less responsiveness and less maneuverability from those larger props. And there's actually a reason why 5-inch has sort of been settled in as the sweet spot for flight time, power, performance, and responsiveness. But if you're, you can get some really good performance out of 6 or 7-inch props today, especially because the motors that we're using can be really, really powerful, torquey, and responsive. Tip number seven for longer flight times, get a larger battery. And you may be surprised that this wasn't tip number one. It sort of makes sense that a bigger battery will give you longer flight time. And that's kind of true, but it's kind of not as true as you might think. Because when you go to a larger battery, you add weight to the quad. And there's a law of diminishing returns where you just don't get as, you double the size of the battery, you're not going to get double the flight time, not anywhere close. And you're going to make a lot of trade-offs in terms of handling and responsiveness as you add that weight. So putting a larger bat, going from a 1300 to a 1600 milliamp battery on a, on a five inch quad, that'll give you a little bit longer flight time, but there's a limit. You probably aren't going to go to like a 250 gram, 1800 or 2200 milliamp hour pack because the quad just wouldn't fly like you want it to. That being said, going to a slightly larger battery can give you slightly longer flight time without too many compromises in terms of performance. Tip number eight for longer flight times also has to do with the battery, and it's to go to a higher C rating battery. The C rating of a battery relates to how much current it can provide. And when a battery's C rating is too low, you get voltage sag, and that voltage sag can be enough to end your flight. If you're flying a typical 5-inch mini quad on like a 45C battery, the minute you hit the throttle, you're going to go from 16.8 volts down to like 13.5 volts, and your flight's going to be over. So if your battery doesn't have a high enough C rating for what you're trying to do, your flight's going to end a lot sooner than you would like it to, than it needs to. And you see this a lot with the micro quads, like the, the, you know, the tiny whoops and stuff. Those little 255 milliamp hour 1S batteries, a lot of them are not very good. And we don't treat them very well. We leave them fully charged. We don't put them at storage voltage. So they often get really worn out. Having a battery with a good C rating and a healthy battery that doesn't sag will let you get the longest flights possible. Tip number nine for longer flight times is going to be a little controversial, and that is use a lower voltage battery. Now this is similar to what I said earlier about limiting your throttle. Instead of, let's say you've got a 2100 kV motor, like the Umagod 2100 kV hype train motors that's designed for 5S or the Stingy Hype Train 2150 KV designed for 5S. You can run that on 4S. It won't have quite as much thrust, but it'll still fly pretty good, and you'll get significantly longer flight time by sort of undervolting the motor. You can do this if you have a 6S build. I actually have flown a 6S, uh, I think it was 1750 KV motor on 4S, and it was flyable. It wasn't like, out to the moon when I hit the throttle, but it was flyable for smooth freestyle. It was certainly more than enough. Now, this tip is going to be most useful if you're flying on 5S or 6S. If you're flying on 4S, you're probably not going to go out and invest in a bunch of 3S batteries uh, to get longer flight times, but you could. But if you're flying on 5S or 6S, it certainly might make sense to have some 4S batteries 
sort of in your pocket, not literally in your pocket, <laughs> in your flight bag, so that if you want to get a longer flight, a smoother, longer, less slower flight, you have the option. Tip number 10 for longer flight times is use a higher voltage battery. Wait a minute, didn't I just say a lower voltage battery gives you longer flight times? I know, but what I mean is use a higher voltage battery on lower KV. And this is a little bit controversial. This is the whole 6S low KV thing, the hype train that you may have heard about for the last year or so. And I've come to the conclusion that 6S low KV, in other words, higher voltage with lower KV does give somewhat longer flight times, all else being equal. And I don't know why that is, and I'm not going to get into the mathematical arguments about why that shouldn't be. I do think it's true. Now, you may have heard, like, Mr. Steele did a video where he claimed to get, I think, almost double the flight time when he went some, to 6S low KV. And I've done some tests where I've said I got, like, you know, 20 seconds more flight time. And the truth is probably somewhere in between. Like, I'm probably being a little too conservative, and he's probably exaggerating a little bit. No, no offense intended. But I do think it's true. Going to higher voltage and lower KV does give longer flight time, all else being equal. So that's going to be my final tip for getting longer flight time. If you're thinking about whether you might want to go to 6S low KV, uh, longer flight time, I think, is one valid reason to do it. It's not going to be double the flight time, but it is going to be a little bit longer. If you're trying to get from three minutes of hard freestyle to maybe 3.30 or 3.45, that could do it for you. And especially if you're a racer who just absolutely needs to hit two minutes of all out flying, there's no question. I mean, racers were the one who pioneered it. There's no question that you get longer flight time there. Well, all right, there's 10 ways you can get longer flight times. And some of those you can start playing with today. Like you could easily just try some different props out or change your up tilt. Gosh, it doesn't cost you anything to try a, a slightly lower up tilt angle and see how that affects your flight. Some of those though, you're gonna be thinking about as you start planning your next build, like frame and motor selection and battery voltage and so forth. But I hope that has helped you. I hope you've enjoyed this. But if you did enjoy this, or if you found this educational, or gosh, if you implement one of these suggestions and it gets you longer flight time, yay, then could I take a moment to remind you that this is my full-time job. And one of the ways that you can support me is to, well, normally I say use my affiliate links, but there's no affiliate, there's no products in this video. But there is a link to my ultimate FPV shopping list, which is a website I made with a list of all the products I recommend in almost every possible category. And many of those links on that website are affiliate links. You can click those affiliate links before you make any purchase at one of those affiliated vendors. So you're going to go shop at Amazon, Get FPV, Race Day Quads, Rotorite Store. Just click one of those links first and I'll get a small commission from your purchase no matter what you buy. The other thing you can do if you want to help support me is join my Patreon. I do have a Patreon. There is a link in the video description and it's a way you can just give me a couple bucks a month as thanks for the, for the hard work I put in sitting at a desk talking to a camera <laughs> every day. I love my job. I hope you love the content I'm producing and if you feel like supporting me, I sure do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor. Tell me, you, I know there's more. I just made it a list of 10 because that's what you do on YouTube. 10 tips. I know there's more. What'd I miss? More tips for longer flight times. I'll just make a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.